Hello and welcome everybody to Big Baby Sports. I'm Big Baby Jonathan here, the host of today's show. I got a very special guest, former NBA player Ronnie Brewer. Ronnie Brewer Jr., how's it going, man? Hope all's well with you and the family, man. How's your 2021 going so far? Man, it's going great so far, man. Hopefully 2021 will be a lot better than 2020. So just trying to stay safe, healthy. My family's trying to stay safe and healthy and trying to just get through this is the best way possible. Yeah, man, same here, but unfortunately my 2021 hasn't been going too well. You know, lost my dad right when 2021 hit, so it's still got to keep pushing through. Man, yeah, just man. like you always told me, anything ever happens to me, keep pushing forward. You and know? I'm sorry, sorry to hear that, man. And prayers for, for you and your family. Appreciate it. You know, in today's show, we're going to talk about um, the Lakers, your experience with the Utah Jazz, what was it like being played with Jerry Sloan. But first, what was it like being in the NBA overall? Man, it was the dream come true. Um, you know, I'm being from Fayetteville, Arkansas, we don't have an NBA team. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, the thing that I looked up to was the Arkansas Razorbacks. That was mm -hmm. the pinnacle to me um, and, and my peers. So um, being able to get drafted after going to college at Arkansas for three years by the Jazz was a dream come true. Getting to play against some of my childhood role models, my idols, um, was great. Um, it was kind of a, a eye opener to, to, to go against those guys, but you know, it was just a blessing to be in the NBA and to be able to compete against those guys night in, night out. Yeah, man, I love I love what you did on the, the court, man, each and every night, man. And uh, your father also went to the same college as you. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, you know, my dad went to the University of Arkansas where he played basketball. He was all American. My mom went to the University of Arkansas. She played basketball. My sister Alicia went to the University of Arkansas, ran track where she was all American. So uh, the bloodline was there. Uh, my parents and my family kind of wanted me to go there, but I still had sweat options. You know, in Kansas, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Florida, UConn, uh, to name a few, uh, who was, you know, kind of caught my eye. But, you know, when it all came down to it, I, I felt like Arkansas was the best place for me. Um, had a great career here, played for, for Stan Heath, um, built some long, long lasting relationships with, with some, some teammates. So, um, you know, I, I love playing there. And, you know, I didn't feel like there was any additional pressure that my dad went went to um, Arkansas and had so much success. I just was able to come in and be myself and, you know, just play hard and things just fell in place for me. Yeah, man. And uh, also, too, man, did you and your dad ever have those competitive practices? Uh, when I was young, yeah. Um, you know, almost my entire life, my childhood, uh, at least, my dad was bigger than me. My sister was bigger than me. Everybody in my family was taller than me. It wasn't until I was a sophomore mm -hmm. um, in high school where I actually hit a growth spurt. I was about 5'8 in ninth grade. That summer came along. I went from 5'8 to 6'4 in one summer. And then when mm -hmm. school started in August, um, the first couple months uh, of school, I went from 6'4 to 6'7. So in almost less than a year, I went from 5'8 to 6'7. So once I made that growth spurt and kind of got out of the state, my bag kind of was like a – it's probably – Probably time not to play one on one anymore because I was a little bit bigger and stronger and more athletic than he was. Okay, yeah, it's you know competitive basketball is always fun, man. But speaking of competitive basketball, man, who was the toughest player that you had to guard in the NBA? Shooting guards, small yeah. forward, man. tell us. That's tough because I, I had the unfortunate assignment each and every night to, to to guard probably the best player on the floor. Um, you know, for the longest it was Kobe Bryant. Um, and, you know, he was great with all the things that he did. And, you know, he was so skillful. Being able to score on three levels mm -hmm. was tremendous. Uh, Tracy McGrady is another mm -hmm. guy. Vince Carter was another guy. Um, Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony. Um, you know, a lot of people don't give this guy a lot of credit or the credit he deserves. Gilbert Arenas, um, you know, he, he, he scored a lot of points. Michael Red scored a lot of points. Um, you know, it, it's just so many talented guys that are in the NBA who can all score the basketball at a, at a prolific clip that, you know, if a guy can get going, it might be a long night for you. So uh, Kobe was one of the greatest I've ever played against. Um, his footwork was, you know, out of this world. And, you know, it felt like as he got older in his career, he knew he wasn't as athletic. I think he mm -hmm. became more skillful and, and molded his game even more. So, um you know, I love those competitive competitive games that we had against each other. Um, and, you know, God rest his soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Uh, Kobe Bryant, man. RP to a legend, man. But 
speaking of Kobe, man, we gotta dive into it, man. Give me your your best Kobe Bryant Kobe Bryant moment. Um, man, I <laughs> I always tell people this story because it was kind of like a welcome to the NBA for me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, playing for Coach Sloan, he wasn't high on playing rookies. Mm-hmm. He kind of made it seem like you, you needed to earn the minutes. Um, and, and and I was okay with that. I was okay with you know earning your minutes, but you know, if I'm putting in the work and practice in the weight room, film sessions, you know, I feel like I deserve to play. And it kind of was like, you know, whenever I feel like your timing is right, I'm going to put you in there. So mm-hmm. we were at the Staples Center. Um, <laughs> uh, Kobe has 30 points, um, like, going into halftime. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, myself, Paul Millsap, D. Brown were the rookies on the team that year. We're sitting at the end of the bench together, like, Guys, we're watching the clinic. We're watching one of the best of all, the best to ever do it. Uh, one of the greatest of all times um, in our in our uh, age of, of basketball. Um, you know, this is this is you know a one in a lifetime opportunity. We got the best seats in the house. We got floor seats, um, and we thought in our mind like we're not getting in the game because he's not going to play rookies. Mm-hmm. So we we go to the halftime. Kobe's got thirty. You know, Coach Sloan's in there, you know, slamming down his clipboard. He's screaming, you know, are y'all are y'all scared of Kobe Bryant? Like, he's just a man. Like, you know, who's going to take the challenge? And, you know, he's going down the line. Like, you're scared of him. You're scared of him. You're scared of him. He gets to me. He was like, I know you're scared of him. And I was like, Coach, you know, I don't, I'm not really scared of any man but mm-hmm. God. But I respect him. Uh, you know, um, but he puts on his, his jersey just like I put on mine. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I'm not scared of him. I respect him, though. So he goes, okay, well, you're going to start the second half. And I was like, wait, what? And, you know, Dang. I was, I was like, in shocking and awe. And, every, you know, you know, I was confident about it. But, mm-hmm. you know, if, if, if you played a sport and you got 30 points going into a, a halftime, you think that you're going to go for 60 or 70. In my, in my mind, I mean, Kobe did go for 81, so anything is possible. So uh, I just played as hard as I possibly can, and fortunate enough for me, he didn't get 60 or 70 points, um, but I competed my butt off, and after the game, you know, he came over and patted me on the butt and was like, hey, young fella, man, I love your competitive nature. You never gave up. You never stopped competing. He's like, and you're going to have a long career in this league, and I was like, man, I really appreciate that, man, because mm-hmm. – you hear all those horror stories of people trying to talk trash or trash talk him, and he mm-hmm. goes to fifty or sixty, and I and I literally was like, man, I'm not going to say a word for him. I'm just going to play hard, and he he took notice of that and he respected it and, and he let me know. So that was my greatest moment of one of my idols uh, going, you know, head to head with him. Yeah, one of my favorite Kobe moments, man, was the '81 and getting revenge on Boston in 2010. But man, yeah. you and the Lakers and Jazz had that tough competitive uh, rival in the playoffs. Man, you would always. Kill my Lakers, man. Yeah. And like that game four, game five, you'd be hitting clutch shots. You know, it was a competitive battle, man. It was very competitive that you guys played. Yeah, man. It's We always, I mean, I have a pretty good relationship with a lot of the guys that I played with. And mm-hmm. we always say, man, what if, what if, what if, what if Kobe went to, would have went to the East? What if, what if um, you know, they didn't make trades uh, to, to put them over that hump? Um, you know, we, we made it to the Western Conference Finals. Um, and lost one year um, uh, against the Spurs. And then every other time we lost to the Lakers, and, and they went on and won a couple of championships and played in the finals. So, you know, very competitive games. Some of the best moments in my, my NBA career was you know, being on that big stage uh, against a, a premier name like Kobe Bryant. So it's something I can tell my friends and my family and my kids that, you know, um, you know your dad got to play against one of the greatest of all time. Yeah, man, Kobe's the greatest of all time. And I have a story, too, about Kobe. He followed me on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And he, we DM'd each other. And then I was, he, Steve Blake hit a game winner. I was like, Steve Blake, let's go. And he's like, White Mamba, LOL. And then just also, too, he followed me on Instagram, too. So it's like, never thought Kobe Bryant would follow me on any type of social media. So it's mm-hmm. kind of that's kind of cool. I have that, like, oh, Kobe Bryant followed me on Twitter and Instagram. So it's kind of cool. You know, but, you know, it's unfortunate he's not here no more, man. He'll be yeah. missed tremendously. It's coming up his one-year anniversary, man. It's 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 sad, you know, to this day. Yeah, man. I, I remember exactly where I was. Um, you know, we, we – it was actually a big day for us because 
Um, we had the legendary Nolan Richardson coming to our school to speak mm-hmm. to our basketball team. Mm-hmm. So I'd set it up that Nolan Richardson was going to come in and speak to our guys. And, you know, he's such, he's such a motivational speaker, one of the best to do it. Um, and I've always been a, a, a huge fan of Nolan Richardson and all he's done for, you know, basketball and his University of Arkansas. Um, and kind of was, was a legend around here for, for young student athletes who wanted to, to play basketball. You know, mm-hmm. like I said, Arkansas was the, the mountaintop to, to to anything. We, we didn't have an NBA team here, so really wanted to be a Razorback. Um, and, you know, I get a my, – my phone keeps on buzzing as I'm waiting for him to, to pull into the parking lot. And mm-hmm. I'm like, man, you know, it was a text message and notifications, so I knew it wasn't Nolan Richardson calling me. So I'm like, <laughs> I knew when Coach Richardson got into the parking lot, he was going to call me, and mm-hmm. I was going to be able to open the door, and I was so anxious and excited about that. And then I finally took a look down at my phone and got to see text messages and breaking news, and I was like, literally, these people are sick and playing a, a crazy joke because, you know, this is not happening to Kobe Bryant. And, and then actually see the, the, the confirmed news it was a pretty tough day for all fans. Laker fans, NBA fans, and and people um, in general because of of what kind of person Kobe Bryant was and what kind of dad he was to his his, his daughter and, and and to his family. So it was tough, and and it, it that it made you want to you know give an extra hug or send a text message to a loved one to, to let them know that you really appreciate everything they do. Yeah, man. For me, man, I was actually helping my mom move into her new office because she works. She's a therapist, so I was helping her move. And I got the notification from Team Z, Kobe Bryant died in a plane crash. I'm just staring at it, and I showed my cousin. My cousin's like, I showed him. He just slaps the phone out of my hand. He said, don't show me that, man. I showed him again, and he takes my phone and throws it. He's like, no, nah, I don't believe you. And once Wojnowski confirmed it, man, I was just like, I fell to my knees, man. Because Kobe's a big inspiration to me on my podcasting platform, the Big Baby Sports, man. I'd always... Every time I do a podcast, I look at film. Okay, what can I do to get better? What, mm-hmm. what can I do to improve? Like, after this podcast, I'm going to watch it. What can I do to get better? You know, and Kobe inspired me a lot. And that really touched me, hurt me a lot. You know, I just, it was just an unfortunate day. Yeah, man. It's, you know, it's unfortunate. You know, that's coming with all you don't know when it's coming. But, you know, when you have stuff like that that's so unexpected, you know, it, I think it, 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 it's an extra jab in you a little bit. And for me, it was, you know, Kobe and then Coach Sloan and mm-hmm. I had family members. I was like, man, just, you know, this is not my year. And, yeah. and for me, you know, I had, to, I had to stop myself and was like, man, you can't get down because, you know, God has blessed you with the opportunity to, mm-hmm. to have that day, mm-hmm. that breath, that moment. And, mm-hmm. like, you would be selling yourself short if you don't make the most out of it, especially when a lot of people are not on this earth to be able to do the same exact thing. Yeah, man, I'm. You know, I wake up every day. God, thank you for waking me up today. God, watch over me, protect me, heal me. Watch over my friends and family. I say that every day, you know. And um, we got to get into it, man. The big breaking news of yesterday, James Harden to Brooklyn. How do you think that's going to work? I, th- I think it's going to work out pretty well. Um, I-, I feel like the trump card in this is Kevin Durant. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to me, Kevin Durant is the alpha dog. Mm-hmm. And I think that he's going to demand um, it to work. I'm going. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to demand for guys to be accountable on both ends to defend, mm-hmm. to move the basketball on offense. Uh, and I and I think like people people assume that James Harden is going to dribble the ball to death and he's not going to pass the basketball. But if you're if you really watch James Harden and you look at statistics, like yes, he scores a lot of points but he facilitates for others as well. Mm -hmm. And I think adding James Harden makes it easier on Kyrie and Kevin Durant where they don't have to work as hard to to get that 20 or 30 points that they're seeking each and every night. I think that, you know, however however you slice it, you put the best defender on whoever it is, Kevin Durant, the second best defender on Kyrie or James Harden or, or, or vice versa, and the third best defender on the next person. Mm-hmm. Somebody's gonna have a mismatch because a lot of NBA teams do not have three lockdown defenders. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I think it's going to be a mismatch. I think that who's gonna benefit the most out of this is gonna be those role players. I think DeAndre Jordan's gonna 
get a lot of lob mm. to guard him. Harris mm. is going to get a lot of wide open shots. And I think it makes those guys look like perennial all-stars because of so much attention that the big three is going to get from Brooklyn. Yeah, man, that Brooklyn Nets trade, man, it's going to be – it's going to be – for me, it's going to be interesting – because I feel like the only team that can match up well with the Brooklyn Nets is the Lakers. We got AD, LeBron, we got um, Morris, we got guys that can switch all position. Caruso can switch. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, AD can guard KD, LeBron can guard James Harden. So you're gonna see a bunch of switching. You're gonna see a bunch of switching with this Laker. You got KCP, very underrated defender. You know, mm -hmm. so we are gonna see, man. And a lot of people around the media are already picking Brooklyn to win the finals. You know, yeah. you gotta. Yeah, I know they did got together, but you have to have chemistry. Chemistry. Absolutely. Absolutely. If, you have, if you don't have chemistry, it's not going to work. Just like my Lakers when we had Dwight Howard, Pau Gasol, Steve Nash, Ron Artest, they didn't have that chemistry from the start, and it showed on the court. Absolutely. And I, I, and uh, you can't really, like, and, and I know LeBron hears all the noise. You can't un uncrown the team to beat them in the playoffs. Like, you mm -hmm. can't say oh, they're favored to win it all without beating the team that won it all. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the Lakers got a lot of depth. They added some really good pieces. And right now, they're building great team chemistry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when it comes to the playoffs, I, I, I have no doubt in my mind that they're going to be rolling. Um, the only question is, is Brooklyn going to be at that same level of coming together as a team, the team camaraderie, mm -hmm. the chemistry? sharing the basketball on, on the offensive end, um, buying in on the defensive end. And in and, and what is the rotation going to be um, as far as conserving guys' legs, minutes, and the role players? Are they going to be able to, you know, be able to knock down the shots in the crunch time and defend guys in the crunch time as well? Yeah, man, it's going to be a crazy, crazy um, regular season, man. You know what I mean? But uh, Ronnie Brewer, man, go ahead and give out your social media so they can follow you, man. Man, uh... Mine's pretty simple. It's, you know, Ronnie Brewer Jr. on everything. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go on Facebook, you can go on Instagram, mm -hmm. um, uh, Ronnie Brewer Jr. 11 on Instagram, Ronnie Brewer Jr. on Twitter, uh, and just Ronnie Brewer on Facebook. So, man, follow me. Uh, I mean, you can basically see what I'm doing these days. You know, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I show a lot of love to my, my team that I coach mm -hmm. um, and I, I, in all, all sports. So, you know, look me up, give me a shout out or whatever. So All right. Thank you for take thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Make sure you guys tune in to tomorrow night's Likers Live pregame show with me, Aaron and Manny at five o'clock PM West Coast time. Thank you so much, Ronnie. Right, Appreciate thank it. You. Yep.